Hi, I'm Peter Baker. I'm a senior lecturer at the Tizar Centre at the University of Kent. My name is Vivian Cooper and I'm the parent of a young man with severe learning disabilities and behaviour described as challenging. And because of my experiences when he was little trying to get him the support that he needed, I set up a charity called the Challenging Behaviour Foundation. The charity provides support to families who have relatives with severe learning disabilities and behaviour that challenges. They worked with the University of Kent to collect information that will help families navigate a broken care system and ensure their voices are heard. We were commissioned by NHS England to investigate, to look at uh, trauma in families who have a member with a, a learning disability and or autism. We sent out an online survey to families about the services they received, about levels of support. What was coming out was that the the stresses that they were under were, were caused by the services that should be supporting them. My name's Sue. My eldest was born um, with a cyst in her brain, which caused her to have um, significant learning disabilities, physical disability. She's got autism and uh, epilepsy and displays behaviours that challenge. Uh, she doesn't live here anymore, although she comes to visit us. She lives in supported living and it's re really broadened her horizons. So I've had varying experiences with the system. My daughter was at a special school for all her school years, um, which on the whole worked well. I would say generally the specialist teams that we've worked with have been very good and very collaborative in their working. I think unfortunately some families have had very negative experiences and once you've had one negative experience um, it, it makes you more defensive when you go to another appointment or meet with another professional because you're worried that things aren't going to work out. Your defences come up, you're expecting a fight, if you like, and then obviously the professional doesn't feel that they're necessarily being listened to, and, and, and so it develops, and before you know it, you've become a problem family. I'm Mary Busk, and I'm a family carer. I have three children, and one of them is disabled. Often on our journey, you know, we are you know, blamed, um, were considered to be difficult and troublesome. You know, you're put on waiting lists for diagnoses that take years and years and years. But the issue is that really the clock doesn't stop for the child and the family. In our case, we've had to go to the ombudsman many times. We've had to go to send tribunals. But all of that sort of accumulates in, in, in sort of enormous distress for the family in taking time away for our other children. And, and you become physically impacted by, you know, feeling dread. And yet at the same time, you've got to be articulate and, um, you know, maintain your composure uh, and really know more than other people in the room and be a very strong advocate as well. My name's Luke Clements. I'm the Cerebra Professor of Law and Social Justice at the School of Law at Leeds University. What we need is, is change at the roots so that we redesign the system. We don't give people counselling and therapy for the suffering the trauma, we stop creating that. And I think that the Tizard work is so powerful in showing that it's the system that's causing this problem and the system has got to change. And one of the problems is that families aren't dealing with just one organisation. They're responding to children's social services, adult social services, education, housing, social security, disabled facilities and issues. They have these multiple systems, each are silos that they have to interact with. And the cumulative impact of trying to work out the rules for each of those systems is traumatising. We recruited a group of family carers and we said to them, if you were producing an awareness raising resource for professionals, 
how would you do it? And it wasn't a set of PowerPoint slides. They were very strong about how they wanted to tell their story. And we collaborated um, so that we had family carers' perspective, we had researchers' perspective, we had professionals' perspective. So we brought all of that in to say, this is not, we're not looking at it from a silo, we're looking at it from a collective experience. By using the research findings and truly listening to one another, the group created a training workshop that many professionals are now being given across the UK. Uh, so my name is Linda Hume and I am the co-production and engagement lead at the Challenge and Behaviour Foundation um, and part of that role has been involved in developing uh, workshops. So the training is a four and a half hour um, one day workshop uh, which is built around four chapters of films that were developed by family members, so writing the script, uh, to presenting in it, writing the materials. So the four chapters that are part of the course really start out on a journey identifying what trauma is. Then they move into chapter two and that looks at uh, why does this keep happening? I think some of it is a lack of awareness and not really understanding that what you do day to day in your job has such a massive impact in terms of how families might perceive what you do or the impact of some of the decisions you might make all be well intended can sometimes be misguided and actually have um, quite traumatic impact in terms of family members. We then move into to chapter three, which then looks at just in terms of that ripple effect about it's not just the individual and perhaps the child they're supporting, but the impact that has on other family members. And then chapter four really is about being much more optimistic about actually what can we do to change this? Um, and one of the things that really resonates with me as a professional is people go away with a real sense of actually I can make a difference this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, um, which is really I think one of the uniqueness and empowering things about the course. Really all you've got to do is to sort of entreat professionals to be kinder, to be more understanding. The, the work that Tissot Centre has done is to show that these individual interactions can be traumatising but co-production is the answer and once you ask families to explain what they want often it's very simple it's very modest in terms of resources uh, it can often be very cost effective and i just don't know why the government doesn't actually do this they talk the talk sometimes but they don't walk the walk but the hopes are that by training professionals in a way where families have a say it will create change in a fragmented system my name is Sue North. I'm the Head of Children and Young People with Learning Disabilities, Autism and Special Educational Needs and Disability for NHS England. I think we recognise that, that for many individuals, their family carers and their, their siblings are the people that will follow them through their life in a way that professionals often don't. We know that there are still some real challenges in the system. We're aware across different professions that there's a, a real growing interest and understanding in how to work in the best trauma-informed way. And we know that the training was so well received. Um, I think we had comments back from, from several regions, from individuals that had done the training, saying it was the best training they'd ever done. It had really made them think about, reflect on their practice, and, and that it, it was going to change the way in which they were interacting with families and individuals. And I just think that's hugely important. Some of the experiences that families uh, describe, there's a big range of experiences. So that can range from trying to get support if, you're, if your child, for example, suddenly uh, begins self-injuring. So hitting their head really hard on a wall or something like that. You know, I need some help with this. And, um, and people are either saying uh, someone else needs to help you or, um, or we haven't got support for that. And as my family was told, we can't manage him locally. He needs to go to an out of area school. So then your child, who may be non-verbal, non you know, very young, has to go hundreds of miles away to, to a service where, um, where the people don't know him, where they're not, you, you're, as a family, you're not able to provide a family life for them. Um, and then, you know, in those services, um, a range of things can happen, things like uh, restrictive practices. That means being held on the floor by a number of people. They might be given medication, strong antipsychotic medication, even though they have no diagnosis of psychosis, to just try and keep them calm and keep and, and uh, sedate them to make them more compliant to fit in with the service. 
I have other children who don't have disabilities and the world that I live in with them is entirely different to the world that I live in you know, with my disabled son. So it is a world that requires you, sadly, from the earliest years to become a, a legal expert on education, on health, on commissioning, you know, on benefits, on, on so many things. The research and other work that has been developed around family trauma has really given a sort of a voice and a name to something that I and other family carers, you know, have experienced for a very long time. There is hope, there is, there is a future in terms of that academic work and, and the training. And though it may take time, this research is the start to making a difference in the care system. I would love the Tizard Centre to do more work on this, to get this message out. It's not just a message for professionals, it's also a message for families that they, they, they can articulate their experiences in terms of suffering effectively post-traumatic stress disorder caused by a system, rather than many families blaming themselves. The collaboration of researchers, professionals and families is only at the beginning of its potential. We are continuing to get sort of interest from sort of NHS England and local authorities about pushing this training forward. But really, this is only the start. We really do need to find out sort of more about sort of family experience and also to ask families about what they want in terms of services and how they think they should be involved. So, yeah, this is just the start of the journey.